Hi everyone, Paul Bertarelli reporting from Aero in Friedrichshafen, Germany. If you didn't know what these strange looking components were, you might never figure it out until you see the completed picture. This is Evolo's Volocopter, a unique distributed electric power aircraft that's been flying unmanned for a while now. But recently it completed its first manned flight. I spoke with Evolo's Stephen Wolf about what comes next. Uh, so, Stefan, you completed the first manned flight of this. You've done a number of unmanned flights. So how did it perform on the manned flight and what did you learn? Uh, manned flight was absolutely as we expected. Um, everything was running fine. We did a lot of tests before, switching off motors, whatever. And we were absolutely sure that everything is working fine and it actually did. And, and how much time does it have on it now in manned flight? Um, the current battery that we have um, it would allow for approximately 15 minutes, uh, including, or not, not including uh, some reserve. Um, but we're currently in talks to replace the battery and that will allow for 20 minutes at least. And the last time I was here, which was two years ago, we did a video uh, on the uh, Volocopter. Some things have changed. Now, I'm looking at the panel now. It's a little bit different. Tell me about some of the changes you've made. Here is the battery voltage. That's the voltage of the nine batteries that we have. Uh, charge stage, which is currently at 100%. Uh, this is the board uh, voltage for the for the components that we have, other than the motors. Um, that's the minimum cell voltage of the main batteries. Uh, as you can see now, it decreases if we, if we start flying under load. Um, it always shows you the minimum voltage of the, of the cells of the, each of the batteries. Uh, because we have 14 cells in each battery, and this is the minimum one. Uh, battery temperature, um, the current load of individual batteries. Uh, this is the drive state uh, reported by each of the motors. L1 and 2 is like, um, shows you that uh, it's very at, at the edge of uh, current, for example. Um, we have the artificial horizon with a compass. Um, and of course, we have the thrust of the motors. As you can see here, this is a replay of, of a test flight that we did um, tethered. Let's talk a little bit about the controls in this. Uh, this completely rethinks and reimagines uh, what vertical flight can be as far as mm -hmm. helicopter dynamics. So there's basically a stick here. Uh, mm -hmm. Explain for us what exactly the stick does. If you start, you want to climb up a little bit. You push the, this lever up with your thumb and will climb as long as you push it. Then you let go and we'll just hover on the spot and you push forward the main stick and we'll start flying forward. Um, for a turn, you just turn it like this, right turn, left turn, or the same in hover, you can just hover on the spot and, what do you call it, yaw? So, yaw. Mm -hmm. so, so if you want to yaw, you just turn the main stick like this and that's all about it. If you, if you let go, it was just hover on the spot and automatically. I noticed in your some of your test footage that uh, you, you've tried or are about to try a ballistic parachute. It's here. Is that, that is installed now in, in a place? Yes. What it's a must. That, what does that do to payload? What's the basic uh, payload of this aircraft? It, it will carry two people? Yes, of course. 450 kilograms takeoff weight mm -hmm. maximum. Um, Currently, the authorities, European authorities, are thinking about increasing that for electric vehicles to like 540 uh, kilogram. Uh, others would also prefer to have that to 600. Now that we've seen the basic physics of the Volocopter, we're going to talk to Florian Reuter about some potential applications for this technology. Initially, we'll start off with, you know, based on our type certification in the ultralight category, so an existing regulatory scheme that we fit into. Um, so basic applications will be, you know, whatever people are using gyrocopters or ultralight helicopters for today. So it'll be mostly enthusiasts, flight enthusiasts, buying this in the initial years. 
However, um, receiving a, a regular commercial helicopter license is on our roadmap, especially when we grow the size of the vehicles from a two-seater to a four-seater. Um, and then we'll apply for you know, regular EASA CS27 type um, corresponding an FAA 27. Um, and then you know, we'll go into more traditional helicopter applications. Um, we see the sweet spot of the Volocopter in terms of its characteristics um, going especially into air taxi services where we shuttle people from one distinct you know, uh, point of um, access to their destination. And um, we're in, in, in good contact with a number of um, large metropolitan areas in the world that have great interests. So one aspect or one example could be uh, Bosphorus, Istanbul, you know, mega city, uh, clear tra ground transport bottleneck is the Bosphorus uh, crossing. And just, you know, to put a volocopter service from one end of the Bosphorus to the other side could be a very valuable addition to existing ground transport means. And this is the type of applications we look at, let's say, in the run of three to four years now. So regulators accept the fact that it's very simple to fly um, and there is a great uh, push towards simplified vehicle operations, SVO, as it's abbreviated, you know, within the discussions of Gamma, NASA and the likes. Um, so yes, there is a recognition that this might actually lower the hurdle to be able you know, to fly such a vehicle. They're working on it. I don't want to be the one giving out a timeline for it, but you know, this is certainly something that would give us a strong um, you know, tailwind if we could make that happen. So we'll definitely you know, facilitate that process as best as we can. Um, but in the meantime, we just accept current regulation and that doesn't get, you know, keep us from making money before that because we don't want to be sitting there crossing our hands for something to be happening that we don't really have under our control. That's not a good strategy.